So I'm going to talk about getting graphene into plastic because there are two main problems with getting graphene into plastic. The first is the loading and the second is the mixing. You've got to get it really thoroughly mixed for it to do any good. And if you get over about half a percent or so, using a heat and extrusion method doesn't really work because the graphene acts as a lubricator. So the plastic just rolls and rolls around and it won't actually get in there. So there's a problem getting more than that in there and there's a problem getting it properly dispersed. And this is what this video is about, is how to do that. Now what we use is this. This is our graphene in solution. So we've got a suspension of graphene, very stable. And um, I show exactly how to make that in the members area. It's also the graphene we use in our ink. Now, it's in the members area because basically, members are guys who have supported us and put their money where their mouth is in terms of that support. So obviously, they deserve a reward for that. And for me, that reward is all that extra information that isn't on the main channel. So if you want to know exactly, you're going to have to go to the members area. I'm sorry about that. Anyway, once you've got your graphene in solution, or you use another method for getting your graphene into solution, that's fine, you need to do something to get it out of water, because this obviously is a liquidy, water-based solution. And it's easy enough, because the first thing you need to do is wash it. So you put a bit of graphene and add a whole load of water, and then we can wash it and filter it, which is what we're going to do. So. That's a five to one mix, works quite nicely, and I'm going to take that up to the filter and filter it. Once you've done that, you end up with that. You might want to wash it a couple of times, but you basically have your graphene now on filter paper, and you don't want to dry it. If you dry it, it will collapse. The reason we've done this, incidentally, is because we need to get this into a medium that is compatible with the plastic that we're going to use. Now, we're going to use ABS, and ABS dissolves in acetone. If you use something like polycaprolactone, you'll need something like dichloromethane. So we need to get that into a medium that is compatible with the plastic that we're going to mix it with. And we're going to mix it with ABS, so we're going to use acetone. So once we get most of the water off, we can pour the acetone in there and give it a wash. Now, acetone and water are not tremendously miscible, but they're miscible enough that we don't have to worry too much about it. So a whole load of acetone in there, and you see it goes black almost immediately as the graphene begins to disperse in the acetone. Give that a wash, and we'll get our graphene off our filter paper and into an acetone solution, which is kind of cool. Now, when you're working out how much graphene you've got in here, obviously you know the graphene concentration of this, you've poured out a certain volume, you've added the water, you'll know what the graphene concentration is in the volume, and so that you're going to know what your graphene concentration is on your filter paper. You've added an own volume of acetone to it, and so you'll know what the graphene concentration is. So give that a swirl around until you've washed the filter paper. And when you've washed the filter paper, you're actually ready to go. So here we've got some ABS. And you chuck in the amount of ABS that you want to mix with your graphene. Just chuck it all in there and then give it a good old shake. When I give it a good old shake, I put it into a jar like this. And I just shake it up and you can see that that is exactly what we just made. It's the acetone with the graphene and then the um, PEEP ABS added and given a mix. And that's all I've done to it. Now, if I take a surface and I'm looking around, ah, hang on a sec, here we go. What we'll have to do? It's a little bit of um, high density polyethylene used as a cover sheet. So if I take a bit of HDPE and I pour a bit of my acetone and graphene mixture on there, 
then that's going to dry. Now if you do this in a bulk way, obviously, by pouring it on there and letting it drying, dry, all we're doing is losing the acetone. If you're doing it in a bulk way, then you want to recapture that acetone and um, put it back into a liquid. So you'd have a hood, you'd have some cooling, you put it back into a liquid and recapture the solvent. Here I'm just letting it float off. Because once it's dry, that's what you get. So that is a bit of graphene-filled ABS. And obviously it's a splodge of graphene-filled ABS, but you can chop that up, remelt it, and turn it into a filament. So it really is that easy to put graphene into a plastic, to disperse it well, to be able to have, give it a higher loading. But you really, I think, need to use a liquid route. And if we use a liquid route, it makes all that stuff much, much more simple. Obviously, there are drawbacks to it in terms of the acetone. If you're making small amounts, it's not a problem. If you're making large amounts, that's a lot of acetone. And if you're making industrial amounts, you're going to want to recapture that acetone. Anyway, I thought I'd share that stunningly simple procedure with you because it's very easy to do. And you can make a whole host of um, plastics just by using a different appropriate medium that your plastic is going to dissolve into. I hope that was of interest and thank you very much for watching.